I think you guys can hear me. I think you can. All right, you guys want to know how the uh, voice was doing is the same way. But it's okay. You still got to it, hopefully, by tonight. Uh, there'll be a big difference. Hopefully. We hope so. I certainly do. So, we want to talk about And yeah, Sister Mayor. Thank you. You want to change this? You are continuing to continue to get to this pretty awesome. Here he is us. Tapes, people are in a great tension for some reason. They are. They're in a great tension. But I want you guys to be aware of some. Right? And she does make sure in that time take care of each other. Also understand that we're human beings. Right? We had any one of us at any given time can have a type of issue in our lives and will cause us to somewhat reverse our direction. That cause us to hack out character. Listen, be ready for that. Always be ready for that. Right? Be ready for that. I know in my personal life, I have a great many people. I've done a great many things. But I'm always ready for someone to go bonkers so that when they go bonkers, I can easily forgive them. I can easily forgive them. So, be that same way when it comes to other folks, have an understanding that people don't always know how to be with one's hand. And sometimes people are highly pressured by circumstances. We don't need to be ready to forgive them. Right? Even in my case, yeah, we do run into folks that sometimes. They go overboard. And of course, we have to act accordingly to keep the continuity of the chat going. But it doesn't mean, you know, that person's excommunicated. That's not what that means, right? We do that for the sake to get rid of any confusion at the moment. You know, it's very difficult to do, by the way. It's not some easy thing to do. It is. Because nobody wants to do this. All of us want each, all of us want each other. To do the right thing, reason the right thing, right? But he telling you to be ready for it. Because not everybody is going to handle everything the same. Not everybody is able to handle everything, right? And there's sometimes you have to deal with brand new levels of thing. Always have love in your heart, ready for the next person. Stand ready to forgive, not ready to point the finger and accuse. I had been did a wonderful job today. He so did the people in the chat room and those of you in mix and you guys when when somebody and they start to lose it, right? That can happen to anybody in number one. They really can. Uh, but just stand ready to the small accordion. We can feed it and do that. I mean, you never have to feed it. And that's what I was so encouraged by. Because you guys weren't feeding into it, right? Which is good for both you and the individual involved. When that happens, if you feed or react by it, all too often you make it worse. And you make a non-situation a situation. So, uh, but good job. So, most part, good job. Because you didn't do that. It's very important. Also, next year, guys, remember, you have a, you, you can click and block someone from seeing whatever they post so that you're not distracted. For some reason in the time we live in, it's almost like people believe they have to read everything. You don't, you don't, you don't have to read everything. You don't have to see everything. You don't have to do that. There's no law saying you have to do this. You don't remember that. Remember that. Remember that. Always remember that. In my life, there are so many people who had to, who have wrong, you know, some can come back after about 10 years. They do, after about 10 years. And I guess it's on their mind so much, they apologize after 10 years. Can you imagine that? Because I know if I did something, a person who never did anything to me, and I came to my senses, it would bother me. It would. It would bother me. I think that most of us, have done something like that before. 
right? You thought that someone intentionally did something only to find out they did not. And then you feel bad for how you responded. You lost your, your, your senses at the moment, right? You lost your control at the moment. And then later on down the road, that person comes to your mind. Do you want to get it right with that person? Or just remember that next time somebody acts, you know, inappropriately, right? Now, depending on the level, depending on the level, um, you have to act accordingly depending on the level, right? And that, that holds confusion down. But I want everybody to know it doesn't matter. Um, you know, in, when you're in that moment, something happens like that, right? I want you guys to know that we're praying for you. And it's a fact. We're praying for you. I know I certainly am praying for the individuals who would do that. If somebody unzipped and acted way out of character, I want that prayed person. I will be thinking about that person. There are lots of people I think, right? Um, but the second thing is this, the last thing is this. When you're online, there's something called impersonation. Okay. Now, it would be bad if you thought a person uh, was the person you talked to the day prior. But please have an understanding that people love to impersonate later. Okay. So keep that in mind also. Because you just never know. You never know. You just never know. So when he says, how can someone access Larry's news page? In one on Mixler? I have no idea. I don't have an idea. I'll tell you why. Listen, guys, I want to tell you something. When you, in serving me in Afghanistan, I've had about, you can be about 30 close people serving the Lord, right? And 28 of them passed away. They've already gone. That's serving the Lord. In other areas, I've, been, I've had over 300 plus people um, pass away. They can no longer with us. Now, because of that, because I've gone through that so much, I do not keep, I don't keep uh, things of an individual to go back to revisit. I tend to stick with the truth of the word and to honor that person. But they want the person that's finished their race here. Something comes over me internally. I'm incredibly proud, right? Incredibly proud, I am. And there comes a good people like Larry. Because I still think about Larry and, and Effie and Wanda and folks like that, right? I think about them and their servitude to Christ. And when I think about that, I can't help but to smile. And a part of me is greatly envious. It is a finished race. You really am. You really am. See, I always, I personally, I want the best for somebody else. I mean, I can go with how. See that in the person you walk forward. And do they? So I don't want you guys to ever mistake something about me, though. I'm not morbid. Right? And not that. It's just that I want the best for people. But when you want the best for someone, you want them to make it, and when they have made it, that is the greatest thing you can ever know. Can't they actually made it? And when anybody makes it in my life like that, I do not keep memories. Right? You don't like to keep memories because what happens is you start to relive a moment and sometimes you can get stuck. So it's a way I deal with it. You know, not everybody is like that. You can have a thousand pictures on your wall of um, eight states right past. That's okay. I just have to be careful never to revisit. But what the Lord has handled, I knew that so that I can go forward. If I were to ever turn back and begin to reminisce about everybody who's lost because I did that twice in my life, it's too much. I'm saying that right now. It's too much. Too much loss, right? And if I start sinking in that loss, uh, I'm no good to anybody else. Plus, to me, that's a bit selfish. Yeah, you think? To me, it's a bit selfish. Right? I am a, a voluntary tool that is purchased for servitude. I choose that. 
I do not want to be held up by anything else. This only comes like somebody asked for in Larry's news page. I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, did some of the things we had in COT, those were in a zip file. Right? They've never been opened. Then is it fine? Uh, I won't go back into those either. Because I like a person to, um, you know, essentially, they're sure I'm the dummy stuck back here. Right? We are all collectively the dodos that must continue so that we can make it to if they have made it. Smile for them. Smile when you're missing someone like that. Have an understanding. That because they served the Lord and did believe they are with the Messiah. You know that. They're not gone. I hope you know that. They're not gone. They're with the Messiah. They are for sure. They are free from the bondage of this world. And they are bondage. Yeah, they're free. For your loved ones that you lost. And they need the Lord. They're free. They are free. It's not a fool. And have an understanding that you one day, if you continue to serve, you're going to be free too. Don't, don't, don't make a mistake and become sorrow. Right? Because when you become sorrowful at somebody else's freedom, what do you think they would see you? If I made it, just say I passed away and I made it. And I just, I can, I can see everything in the heaven because in part of the heavens. Do you think I'm going to look back down here and see somebody crying for me? Are you joking? No. Hey. Because if I could, I'd come back and whop them in the head and say, what are you doing? What are you crying for? Right. No need to do that. All this, dying, all this comes from people who never believed in the first place. You know, the world has rituals. You need that thing. And they have people cry at funeral because to them, there is no other place that there, there's nothing. Life is all the deep they have. They don't matter. They have nothing else. But to us, we understand this is a wing, a birthplace, a place where people make a decision, a place where we are tried. And our walk determines our answer to the most high in all areas of life. It is a very important. We understand that. We understand that we're not born yet. But to the folks of the world, this is all they have. This is their paradise. It's it. And after this, they say they go into nothingness. So they desperately search to matter in this world. Do you know that? If you look at anybody in the world who's not a believer yet, they search every aspect of life to matter, to be on top, to be seen, to be remembered. They do. It goes to them. This is all they have. Look at you. This is not even the beginning. This decides if you're going to be born or not. Your life begins when you finished your race here. Your life begins when you've made it and you're deciding right now if you're going to be born dead or not. That's what you're deciding right now. And those who are born dead rejected the core and fundamental values of the creator and of love. They did. Those who are born alive embraced those fundamental values and attempted to walk in them. Then they be you. So they're born into a family. And those who are alive, well, that's Trump. After all the other six blow, if they're alive at that time, they will see one of the greatest transitions in human history. Indeed, in all history, that'll be an incredible time. Truth be told, many have not made it to the last Trump. I may not make it to the last Trump, and things for certain. I will finish this process one way or another, and so will you. You do know that. Listen, so let me put something in your head. What that means is, how many of you are on the age of 40? 
if you're over the age of 40, you're very close to going home. You will be going home. You're leaving everything behind. You will be going home. I hope you know that. So don't sit with a frown on your face. Don't get discouraged by things in the world. You're leaving. You have things to tend to, don't you? That makes it a bit more exciting, and you start thinking about truth again. The truth is, you are leaving this earth. And you're going to leave everything behind, and nothing will go with you. Now, that means you might want to take a look around. You might want to figure out, how's this guy going to make it without you? How's this person going to make it without you? Right? What can you leave this person behind that's going to find all your stuff? How can you impact somebody's life if they find a, a trail of all your stuff? You give it serious consideration because it's 100, 1,000% going to happen. You are going home and you will not be here on this earth. So get yourselves ready. And you start living your life with a mindset like that. List. One day it hit me. It hit me. One day it hit me, right, that I was leaving. I mean, it hit me hard that I was leaving. You know how you live life and you're living and you're going through your day-to-day thing and the job lasts forever and this lasts forever, right, and the troubles last forever. Well, it hit me that I'm leaving. It hit me so hard I couldn't forget it. The next day, I saw everything differently. Every problem that arose. I could ignore it. It didn't even phrase me. It didn't bother me. The comments, things that would take place, they had no more power. Do you know why? Because I was leaving. I was leaving. But then I thought about something. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm leaving. And sure enough, I'm going to have to face Christ. I better make sure my works are real. They better be real. Right? They better be real. So I start, I think, with a different mindset. I know I'm leaving, but somebody's going to come behind me. Somebody's going to look through everything I ever did. What will they find? What will they find? I'm not a person who keeps their journal. I'm not a person who keeps your records. If you not know, I started keeping your journal and the records. I have, oh my Lord, I have. A dozen volumes. There are things that I found out in life that I'll jot down. And if anybody ever gets hold of those books, they're going to start reading them. And I'm telling you, I mean, one of the one of the inquiries, for example, I'm telling them, I said, look, I don't know what your time is like. It is probably, it probably looks bad. You may not have a lot to eat. But I wanted to tell them something about this time. I told them everybody was rich and they didn't know it. I told them what we did on a day-to-day basis and we complained about and that we didn't realize how much we had. And I begged of them never to do that. Never to do that. Never not just blind them. Right? To take another look around. And for the smallest crumb, be think Because their life is managed. I even told them you probably don't believe all things about Christ. And then I go into some real world scenarios, not testimonies as you could think of me, the things I've learned about the interactions with people, about prayer. You know, when you pray for something yeah. and it doesn't come and how discouraged you are. And then later on, you try to go find out what went wrong. You see, when you look back on your life to find your savior, you're going to find answers to all of that. And you can give that to somebody else. You go, somebody else is going to find your stuff. I've made things for other people who will come after me. I have instructions for people who will find certain things in certain areas. I've actually put big metal boxes in the ground. Isn't that funny? That's a fact. I've done that. I have actually done that. I told them about things in this world. Places in this world. You've all sorts of things are in there, but most importantly, that vacation of faith. 
living in a world where there are monsters. Listen, because if we believe in revelation in the tiniest bit, you know that others are going to be alive at that time. I've been told one fellow, I may be in a different form, but I write this in my normal form. And I wanted to encourage anybody who would find it. We, and I told them to them, what they're seeing all around them is a mystery to all of us who lived at this time. But they have to deal with it. I can only tell them the origins of such things. I can evil that festered everywhere it could in our time and how to identify it. How being nice, right? has nothing to do with being holy. How the ugliest things bring the most beautiful gifts and cows the most beautiful souls. Yeah, but I told some real things. There's a work to be done. There are people that are going to be in your bloodline. You don't know how long that process is going to take. You could be writing to your great-great-grandchildren or your great-great-great-great-grandchildren, or a complete stranger. What are you departing? What was your life worth? If your whole life you lived here, what will you leave someone else? Your life is valuable. Why well, let your life go to waste on your trials and tribulations? All of what you have learned and picked up and dealt with, somebody else needs to know that you had it rough, but you held on. Yet you kept going. They need to know how you kept going. They do. They need to know how you did. Can you imagine if you picked up a book and it was a journal of one of the prophets or somebody who lived around that time and how it was rough during the time of the Exodus and somebody laid down every single entry of every single day of how they made it through? Would that be worth something to you? Would it be worth something to you to know they struggled with faith? But with every ounce of their being, they held on. Right. I'm telling you something. And people are discouraged. They're not looking for the Peter Pan story. They're looking for the day-to-day -day life story. They're looking for the smallest bit of encouragement. And if they're living in dark times, which they will do. Your writings to me appreciate. And I, sh I did not write. With a bunch of, uh, yeah, you know, like it was a book. No, it's just as I'm talking to you right now. So those words in that journal to help someone, to really help them, to let them know primary drivers of mankind, what it was like before the beast they deal with. They're not going to know the beast as the beast. According to the book of Revelation, many of this earth are not going to be able to identify the beast. They won't be able to be able to serve it thinking it is normal for it to be there. And guess what? Many of you will not be here to help them. You won't be here to intercede. You're going to be dull. What you do not matter matters. Everything in your life, it matters. He does. Does. So don't think, listen, folks, don't think you're going to be here for another thousand years like Earth. You know, your situation is going to last forever. That's a lie. You're leaving. You're, you're leaving. You, you're leaving. You're on your way out. Now the question is, the question is, what have you left undone? I don't know about you, but I'm not going to face Christ in complete. And every time I think about that, it, it's kept in my step. What about you? What about you? See, when I start thinking, when I start realizing the truth that I'm leaving, who cares about sickness? Who cares about that stuff? I don't care about it, can you tell? I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing apparently at a quicker fate, a pace. How about that? When you see the degradation of the world, what's happening to people? and things and the earth. You know you're leaving. You're leaving. You will leave. Listen, and if you have children, right? If you have children, don't deceive yourselves. 
when you leave your father's in command of that, not you. Do you know how many parents have left their children behind and the children are not ready for the parents to leave? People do not control that. You are leaving. And once you leave, you cannot come back to help anybody. You can't. You're going to be gone. You're not coming back as a ghost. If you're not doing that, you're not coming back to help out your you know, family members. You're not doing that either. You're leaving. You're going beyond a forbidden guff, an unpenetrable guff that no one can penetrate. So guess what? Encourage your kids now, no matter what state they're in. Instead of being angry at that person in the world like your spouse, like your grandson or your son or your daughter or whatever the case is, stop being angry. Be very loving. Encourage them. Let them know, right? Let them know you want them. If you want them to make it. So your kids are going to see the very thing they're telling you does not exist. They're going to see it. You know how when, listen, you know how when we're young, right? Our, our grandparents or parents said something. And our parents thought we were not listening. But you get, you get down the road in life later on, say like 30 years later, something happens. And you think to yourself, my grandmother told me this would happen. My dad told me this would happen. My mother told me this one. And I didn't, I didn't believe them. Right? You know, that reveals a lot. How many of you have done this? You were, you found yourself in a situation that your parents, your grandparents had spoken about. Your guardian, whatever the case is, somebody told you something would happen. And later on down in life, you found yourself in that situation. And you said, wow, they said that. They said this would happen like that. Right. See, that's very revealing. Let me open your eyes to something. You remembered what they said when they thought you were not listening. What does that tell you? That means what you tell your children, what you tell your grandchildren, what you tell those around you. They may not cheer you at the moment, but they heard what you said. So that when that thing comes about, they're going to hear your voice. Do you hear me? Don't think your kids are not listening. They haven't heard what you said. They may ignore you. They may not respond. But it got in there, and one day, one day it's going to surface. Now imagine if it surfaces at a time when they need to make a crucial decision, and you will have impacted their lives at the most valuable and detrimental time in their history. You would have helped that person and you're not even around. Listen. So that means when you speak to them about Christ, you're 100% authentic. When you speak to them about the Lord and his principles, be a demonstrator of those things, but have an understanding that they heard what you said it done in their brain. They cannot unforget it. It's coming up again. They heard you, and it's coming up again. And well, surface is going to surface one day. It's going to surface one day, and it can make or break the situation in their lives. What do you mean that? Don't get discouraged saying they're not listening to anything I'm saying. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, we need to remember what your grandmother said, and your mother said, and your father said, and your guardian said. Your father in heaven brought that to the surface of your mind. He demonstrated something to you. So you better believe it's going to happen to them too. Sow some things into them. Never stop praying for them. Fight the need, fight for them. But have an understanding that you will impact their lives. Greater than you ever thought peace. And according to the way we know is coming. They and everybody else is going to need that encouragement, the time that they have in front of them. See, so things are not going to be long at all. Somebody asks, why doesn't Mike discuss the rapture, the pre-rapture, because I know I'm leaving. 
I know for a fact I'm leaving. I know for a fact everybody else is leaving. It's up to the Lord. And he, of course, it's time to get everybody at the same time. But even without that event, I'm leaving. And so are you. Guess what? You know what that means? Give some things to do today. That's what it means. If you start thinking like that, you're going to do just like I do. Instead of saying, boy, this day lasted, seemed like forever. You're going to say, it's not enough time in this day. Where'd this day go? When somebody comes to visit you, you're not going to start blowing out like, oh, I just saw this person the other day. I don't want to talk to this person. He can say, ooh, met that person. I may not ever talk to again. You say, come on in. They tolerate a lot. They were not talking about the Lord. They may run away down the street away from you. But you're going to have the can't help it. You need to start witnessing about things. You're not going to care about embarrassment. How the world's going to see you this and the other. All that goes out of the window. Why? Because you're leaving. Because now you have an understanding of a very simple truth that you're leaving. You are leaving. Now the world can accept this. That's why they cry funerals. That's why they say the same thing. I can't believe they're gone. Well, see, they're tell the world is telling you that they have no idea about the transition of leaving this earth. They're deniers of that transition. We better not be deniers. It's the world that says, I can't believe they're gone. Why would a saint ever say something like that? For we know no one is promised more. No one is promised to marry. So what? Uh, so I said, Mike, please, why the cutoff is not a cutoff age? Forty is the number that grabs everybody's attention. Forty days and nights, forty this and forty that. And so that number just popped up. Use 43 and use 20, use 17, use whatever you want. What 40 makes you remember. Don't ask me why it makes you remember. Because I didn't invent the number. I had no idea. Hey, what is it, you're 40? That'd be nice. No cigar on that one, though. I remember when I was 40. I had an extra hair on my head. But we're close. You know that the average person in, the, in this day and age, the average person, right? Not living as long as they used to. You guys mean that? Do you know that a lot of people are dying at the age of 30? So, so you kind of phrase out the common numbers that people are so used to. Right. Lots of younger children, kids, right? They're dying these days. Kids that are 30 years old, they're dying these days. They're passing away. I know people don't like to discuss this subject, but isn't that one of the true facts? You know when a child is born, that's when I cry. I know what they have to face. I do. When a child is born. My heart gets heavy, it truly does. You know how most people celebrate? They celebrate, oh, I've got this and I've got that. You know, well, newsflash, it's not your child. You're just appointed caretaker over what belongs to the most high. And that child has to get through a crucible of things on this earth, and we all know what that is. That's when the praying starts. That's when the heaviness begins. When somebody passes away, they are free, and that's when my heart lifts on the opposite of most things. That's when I celebrate internally that they made it. If I do shed a tear, it's a tear of joy. That's why I don't do funerals, because I can't be a hypocrite and a funeral. I cannot. I demonstrated that one day because I knew no other way to do it, and people need to be like something was wrong with me. But that person made it. I can't perpetuate the lie of the world. Oh, we had a great loss. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You can't lose anything that belongs to you. But people don't belong to each other. They belong to the most high. The reinforcement of these terms of the world keeps people in the world depressed. And just somebody else's thumb, fully control and constrain. When you're no longer constrained, you start to hear these lying terms that are utilized by the will. Even psychologists, behavioral scientists will tell you that people who react in a funeral that's a learned behavior. It is unnatural, do you know that? 
It's a learned behavior. If God allows us to know the truth, why do we deny the person finishing the race? There's a problem there. See, most people don't see a problem. I see a problem. If God get the truth in us, that if the person passing from this world has in fact been finishing their race, then what are we doing denying God to accept man's tradition? See, I can't do it. That's why I don't fit in. That's exactly why I don't fit in with this tradition, Joe. Because me is garbage, just absolutely again, I cannot perpetuate that. And I'm certainly not one to lie to a person to comfort their feelings. I can't do that either. I'm no good at that. No good at that. I can't do it. So you see the difficulty. That's why I'm in the bushes. He saw on the guy in the bushes. That's exactly why. It doesn't mean I'm perfect, no. What it does mean, I'm absolutely against the falsehoods that are programmed to most of this world. You have good people, you perpetuate these traditions of falsehood, causing more people bitterness and pain. I'm doing that because it's not the truth. <laughs> so where did the hope come from? Well, the can they. Same place everybody else did. These cases. And people have long tradition, long lives. Right. They claim they came from the stars and that, well, that simple fact that it may not be 100% false. But remember something, the power of the holy people has been distributed throughout the earth. The gene of the holy people overrides the ethylene, the material. It's at new. If in your own bodies, he said, Where here are surveys, true ones, but you don't want to hear or say, I'm seeing that. There is no one on earth whose body is pure. Everything is tainted, which is why Jesus came to save the souls of men, not the flesh. That's another story. Anyway, folks, remember that. And remember that. The Remember, the time is running out. You're going home. One way or the other, you're going to go. You won't be here. And that's up to your Father in heaven. Specifically, that's up to Jesus Christ. So when I said, is it wrong to be cremated? Well, let me ask this. What about the great many Jews who burn up by system? Can that be altered? You know, it cannot. They were incinerated by Hitler. It didn't matter to me who denies People just have to open their eyes. So if they're incinerated, and if cremation is wrong, it condemns people, right? But all those people who were tormented on the earth, even the people, the massive amounts of people who died, those people are doing right wrong. Jesus came to liberate their souls, not the flesh. The flesh must return back to the earth. Even those who are alive at the last trump. Right. Their bodies have to go. Remember the transfiguration of Christ. I'm telling you, the flesh of the body has to be. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So when asked again, your flesh is for this here. Listen to me. It is a pagan religion. Lifts up the flesh because that's all they have. They deify the flesh. They do. They deified the flesh. Your father does not. We are to die to our flesh daily, which means you don't allow your flesh to govern your day. Your flesh is a vehicle, a vessel that houses something holy. And Jesus came to save what's inside the vessel. Your vessel can be quickened to accommodate the mission of the soul, the flesh is only a vehicle. Pagan religions, any religions, they lift up the flesh. Everything to them is of the flesh. Isn't that ironic? Now that's why in Hollywood, what do they do? Everything is about the flesh. That's when they have blood parties. That's when they exchange blood between all of them and they drink each other's blood. That's a blood party. It's not bad for reason. It's a blood party. Because they lift up the flesh. 
Most people know they've been involved in that stuff. You'll start seeing that this year. Sorry, I'll read it's a lot of people, but that's what they do. Christ came to save the soul. Your flesh is could put. Your soul is redeemable. Your flesh is not redeemable. It is simply part of the earth. Right songs, quite simple. The Bible teaches us that the flesh is tainted. There's no redemption in the flesh. It is tainted. Period. And the vessel that can actually accommodate the straight of the soul. So you cremate the body. Or no. What do you do? See, there are a lot of people in ministry that were good people that were cremated. That belonged to the living God. Lots of people died more. That were essentially cremated. Cremation is a name, is something that people do with a body. And what I'm telling you is that lots of people have been burned. I never get tied up on what's going to happen to the body because God Almighty said it's returning to the dust. From dust it came to dust it will return. So why get caught up on that stuff? Right? I presume none. No, I will not do that. I know what religion has on the protection of the body, this, that, and the other. The only reason they did that to Christ and tried to do, that's why the devil disputed over the body of Moses because the devil was trying to do something with the body of Moses to cause a ruckus upon the earth. Do you know that? What, what was the devil doing? Disputing with Michael about the body of Moses. Why did he want the body of Moses? I'll tell you why. So he can make people stumble with it. So he can make people worship the body of Moses. That's what he wanted to do. Because it was a common practice to take somebody of greatness and encapsulate them into a statue and have everybody worship that statue, just like they do today. And you have people going up paying this next to a statue and they have no idea what's inside. See, that's trying to set this entire world up to fail and to fail miserably. It is only by the grace of God and Jesus of Nazareth that we can have redemption. Otherwise, we're doomed. Unknowingly, you've been a part of things that again, the worst person on earth. Our Father's intercession is, wants, and may be critical in order for our souls to be redeemed. Without Him, there is no redemption. Oh, most things are lost to things. Hell, real big line. I wasn't going to go here, but I'm going to tell you guys something. A tactic is often used in Hollywood. Every expensive corporation, I'll say, every expensive organization is at the heart of it. In many secrets, you're starting to learn there are many secrets on this earth. Here's the part you don't know. Some of you may know, but the majority of you don't know. They knew one day what would come upon the earth. They knew what they had to do. Listen, you're dealing with people who have been planning through the bloodline of their own families for thousands of years, and they knew what was coming. So guess what they said? They said, oh, hey, guys, listen. We know that people are going to deem it this entity, and this entity, and this personality, and this and that. And this giant and that fallen angel, we know they're going to deal with them and we have no power over them. So we have to discourage and obscure them right now. Surely somebody must have said, well, how do we do that? We've got to make movies. Now. We've got to do it now. We've got to make more stories right now. We have to take control over every thing. I put manifest itself so that we can silence the minds who are inquisitive enough to be looking for it. We have to shut it down now. We have to make a mockery of it so no one can find it. So what do they do? They make movies. And in these movies, you have these plots, right? And in the movies, you have these components. And they teach you in the movies to ignore the things that are coming upon the earth. They teach you to be skeptics. They teach you to be believers in specific ways. They teach you to be an expert by way of the movies. Listen to me. 
watch and people watch these movies utilizing the methodologies that are found in the movies in their real life issues and circumstances and sightings. But see, for the most part, people will see something very real and encounter something very real and they cannot identify it. They make things laughable. They do this from the onset so they can control who will accept what. See, because if you start bringing up the topic of Bigfoot, for example, Guess what people do this? Oh, boy, here we go. Why? Why would a person ever do that? Because of Hollywood. Because those with lots of money finance what you go watching, and they program your mind to discount it from the beginning. You start bringing up the topic of giants or Nephilim, fallen angels, things of that nature, you roll your eyes. Why? Because the movies see people have been educated in schools, right? Wrong. You've been educated in the schools to interpret what you see from Hollywood and what you hear from me. Now, think about that one and prove me wrong. Anybody prove me wrong. They know exactly what they're doing and they have already done it. So you could not see what was coming and you would let it right in the door. And that's exactly what has taken place. You were not going to stop it because if anybody were to point at it and name it, you've been taught to shun that person, stay away from that person. That person will paint your life. Do you all see what they did? Do you see what they did? Do you see how they put everybody underneath their thumb and it worked? Do you see how nobody was free? They only thought they were free. Do you see them? When they laugh at something on television, or they show something in a mockery of something on television, or give you some facts and they control how you believe in these facts, people will emulate what they see. It becomes part of your world. You will not challenge it. You will, however, scrutinize everybody who's outside of it. It makes you blind to what is real. So what is coming up on the earth is here and nobody can see it. It's working. It's doing its damage. And nobody is stopping it. Why? Because you can't believe it. You can't believe it. And because you can't believe it, you'll never, accordingly, there'll never be an emergency. Do you see? See how that works? I tell you right now, what they were seeking to do is already done. And nobody's stopped. On occasion, you have people that do confront them. And guess what happens to them? They pass into obscurity. That's what happens. No one remembers the fates who come against them. You'll remember what they want you to remember. Unless you back away from it all. Unless you stop living your life according to how you were trained to live your life. Do you know that they bring that same thing? They're not worried about Christians. Why? Because people have been taught how to be a Christian. That's why you've been taught what is okay to talk about, what is not okay to talk about. You've been taught how to believe in the word and how not to believe in the word. You've already been taught that by the same institutions that make the movies. Search it out. Put me wrong. Somebody put me wrong. Why do you think people are so predictable? Especially when it comes to Christianity. But well, most importantly, why do you think people are so powerless when it comes to Christianity? Why do you think folks are so frustrated? You, you know what? People can fool some people sometimes. Or yeah. how's the saying go? You fool everybody sometimes. You can fool some people all the time. You can fool everybody all the time. Christians are smiling, they're reading, they're engaged, they're happy sometimes, yet I know for a fact they're fighting the emptiness. They're fighting the emptiness. You know that time that hits, you start putting things together, and it's not quite messing up with the hearing, and you begin to question what you're believing.
happening and then somebody calls or something happens to interrupt it. You're on a knife's edge. Because people are believing you have their traditions started by those who make the movies. That's why a knife to one another does not fool me. I'm not me, my niceness. I'm, it's up to the individual to really focus on Christ. And I mean just Christ to break free. You're going to notice there are safeguards on your faith. That whenever you would seek, whenever you seek to break free, whatever starts coming to you, you're going to be assaulted by a reality. How to believe in Christ is reinforced every day of your life. If you can identify it, you can never stop it. And again, those who go against it, they pass into obscurity. The prophets warn everybody, but what do you have? You have people who guard the words of the prophet by way of interpretation, don't they? And if you believe differently than everybody else, you will be quickly excommunicated to control out. Forbid somebody believe in Moses wholeheartedly that they would believe in God wholeheartedly that they would accept Christ and his words wholeheartedly that they would never challenge faith itself, that they would start to hear the Holy Spirit inside of themselves and never be powerless another day again. Here to defeat the odds. I'll say, you guys, now even the COT defeats the odds. We're not supposed to be working like this. No one has anything. You know what? No one works your organizations like COT. No one. I would love a day to dispel the rumors about COT. Just let you guys know exactly what happens. You crack up laughing. You say, well, how in the world is that happening? For example, I've never listened to my own archives. Nor do I name them. Nor do I have any shortcuts to get to the links. Isn't that funny? Nor did I initiate them. Nor am I in charge of them. Isn't that funny? I'll have nothing to do with that. Somebody asked me one time, they said, hey, well, you want to name that me? And not to touch that. No. If this is going to work, it's going to work spiritually, in truth. Not some choreographed cleverness behind the scenes thing to make it look like a spiritual. No, it's done to work spiritually and in truth. And it does. How many meetings have we had with the admins, admins? How many? Would you say? Less than four? Yeah. Isn't that fun? Satan can't stand it. You know why he can't stand it? Because nobody's bound to COT. They do what they do out of love or they do not do it at all. Nobody has to do a thing. It's by the Spirit. Not by force. Not some obligation thing. It's not all of those things that make the corporate world run. And I'm so thankful. See, because it may not conform to corporate standards. It may not be your run-of-the-mill place that you're used to. Make just something that the spirit in this place. The spirit's each other. I'm not making all this the decision is to do. You can see, that's where people mess up. Nothing is wrong with an iron grip. I just want the door every now. I love the Lord. I love his process. I love his discipline. I love how he brings a person through. And I love to be a vessel. As much as I can. So, under great duress, guess what happens? Under daily assaults and attacks and everything else, everything you can imagine, been happening, still operate in the name of the Lord. With all, all the points that have tried to end it and kill it, the Lord has sustained it. It truly is a man. Sister Mary says they're relatives, as yes, they are relatives. They never stop. Happens in my life every day. Things that I'll never communicate. Things that Angela may never communicate. Things happen on a daily basis. See, remember that time I told you guys that if you boast of your love for the Lord, right, make sure it's in the foundation of truth, maybe she will be tried by what you're based on. 
you guys remember right before now, two eight eight bonkers. You remember when I said, anybody? I said, no matter what happens, I will serve the Lord. You guys remember that? Honey, huh? you guys remember that? I said, no matter what happens, it doesn't matter if I'm healed or not healed, I'm going to serve the Lord. You guys remember that? That was right before my throat gave to peace, and then my throat gave to peace. But here I am. You know, yeah, doctors are doctors, right? They are. And just rest for, you know, 10 days. What? 10 days? You have lost your mind. You've lost it. They said I wouldn't have speech in a few days. That's what they said. Yeah. You know? See, because it's not based on their estimates. It's not based on their medical problems or anything else. It's based on God's will. He will give us enough to do his will. Can you guys see that? Can you see it? He'll give us what is necessary. So walk in his will. It's based on your desire to serve him. That's all. It's your desire to serve him. Now, I can tell you this. A lot of people are waiting on the brick and mortar for CRT. I saw some of the devilish plans they had. I mean, I've seen some demonic plans. Communicated with people who don't play games. I, that will solely rely upon the most time. It will. Listen. And yes. the whole point is what the God what the Lord was communicated to us. Each. See, he can talk directly. What well, he did something. You guys know what he did. He could believe us on this earth. To be his body, his mouthpiece, his hand pieces, his legs, everything. He put his body in the earth to do their, do their part. I want to do my part. I will do my part. And they want it choreographed, pre-orchestrated, right? Somebody asked me one time, they said, you never write your things out? No, I have a blank desk because I have no idea where I'm going. The only thing I do is pray before the broadcast. Revelation. Right? I have a general idea. It's amazing you stay on track this far. But the Lord will always, he, he's just, he's good. Right? And that depends on the audience. What he gives me depends on the audience. Now, this for a blocking structure. There's something that we were doing collectively in fun. I have all the bullet points and everything here. Be professional, but when it's from the Lord, it must be from the Lord. I will never step before it. Right? I just love the way the Lord works. And the breakthroughs in COT have been tremendous. I thank God for that. Because I remember, and you know, I am never convinced that what I'm saying is effective. You guys have no idea. Sometimes I'll get done talking. And I'll just kind of put my head down. Like, oh, I really messed that one up, didn't I? I knew. Because it feels bad. You guys know it feels bad. Listen, I'm handling a word that's key. I have no business handling, right? And here I am talking about it. The people who are precious in the eyes of the Lord, and I'm handling the word I have no business handling. It's not my word. It is a holy word. So I'm not going to wield it like it's mine. And so when I'm done talking, I have no idea. If it were effective or not, I get nervous. I get these feelings come over. I mean, a nervousness you can be, if not for the air to comfort me, I'd be a nervous wreck. And then, out of the being, maybe every two months or three months, somebody writes back and gives me some crazy story. Like this one guy had a church. I mean, he was listening to his once a week, and that once a week turned into every day. That every day turned to 10,000 physical people inside of his church that listened to us. And he built everything around our talks. I couldn't believe it. And that baby, that scared me so bad, that scared me. That did. So I'm well, listen, this is funny. I'm well known as the character Mike from the world, Mike who speaks in COT. 
of eating that. He risked causing an impact, people. Just making an impact that nobody can understand. Flash and Sister Patty, we were in the chat one time, and the website was acting bonkers, and Angela comes in, she says, well, I could hardly get in here. And that's the guy. I believe Larry was in the background and something like that, so I'm going to go check it out. And I looked at the number, and I said, well, no wonder. He has 1.2 million people trying to get into the site. And so I went back, right? This one, I went back and checked all the traffic and everything else, and they were unique IPs. And then I looked again and goes, I was thinking, well, this must be a bombardment, some attack or something like that, right? Uh, denial of service attack. And the ISPs checked into it. They said, no. No, all these have, you know, these are folks who have been listening. What? And it just so happened that that one, that, that day, all of them came in at the, just tried to come in at the same time. Then it happened again. And it happened again. And that's when I changed a few things to split some things up. And, and of course, it popped in and did his thing. But then the numbers doubled. They doubled. Right now, indirectly, right, indirectly. And this should make all of you nervous. Indirectly, on average, we have millions of listeners per day. And we have no YouTube. And no social media accounts. Only COT, I strongly believe, I do, I strongly believe that if COT, if we were to go that other way, we would not reach the people we reach. We wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. Because the Lord called me well, a foundation of a thing. People have, people have tried. They have tried, tried so desperately to get us to sponsor us to go on YouTube. To go on something where they could capitalize off the people we would join the event. I said, no. So, yes, you do have people out there that you know, do their thing. They actually use God bless them. God bless them. They're so honest. They're honest. That's an honest thing. It is fit for the folks who utilize our audio, right? And they're eating like that. That's a very honest, that, that's an honest, that's unbelievably honest. It is, but you have some people that are right. I believe the number now is, you know, is 382 cakes you are trying to capitalize on COT. You may have to work with the Lord on that. Later. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to deal with it. And that's just how Satan is. But I believe we'll be fine so long as we continue to go forward in the name of the Lord. I hope that it continues. But I love the authenticity of the Lord's orchestration. I do like that. Whether anybody accepts views, I don't know. The Lord is certainly orchestrating some things here. And it is, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm, I'm incredibly thankful. I said, you've helped tremendously. I'll tell you something. If not for the Lord, I can help any of you. I really couldn't. I can help any of you, if not for the Lord. I see that because he allows me insight, insight. He allows me insight. And he's unique in the deep positions, people in certain places that are clicky pillars and COT that without them, and I guarantee you without them, in this operation would have been put a long time ago. It would have, we wouldn't have had to have done something different. If the Lord knows, my heart never evidently, right? He knows I'm not willing to compromise on the spiritual authenticity that I, I look for. He knows I'm not going to compromise. So he sent others. He did. And they are crucial, critical. They are. They really are. I'm thankful for that. Being the heart on that. It's just a wonderful thing when things happen spiritually. It is. And that's something that will not, I think these things, these traditions of the world are not going to encroach upon that with us. But it's certainly with me, it's not going to happen. It's, it's, it can't happen. It can't happen. Call me stupid. You call me dumb all day. I you call that life. Well, you're not too bright, are you? Well, why do you say that? Well, in the times, you could be quite wealthy. 
Well, I am wealthy, spiritually. How about that? Folks, let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? Let me tell you something. If you're being faced with the most time, you take your money option, you're going to be lacking in the spiritual side of things very quickly. That's what's going to happen. Your well is going to run dry. And so it, it is recommended that you allow the Lord to build you up in the way she would like you to go. And you choose the money thing. See, for me, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. In the face of absolute destruction, I would you know, say, I'm not doing that money thing. I, I, I dislike it that much. I know it's necessary. Right. I knew COT was shut down a couple of times due to that very thing. I knew that. But I, I'm not willing to not be in a position to help somebody again spiritually. I came to guys at store. A person came to me. And they wanted, they needed spiritual help. They did not need a passage. That's not what they needed. They did not need money. They didn't need a friend. That's not what they needed. They needed to know something spiritually. And in that moment, guess what? Nothing came. Absolutely nothing. I can help this person. I felt like, like everything in my life, but that, you know, up until that point, was in vain. Because I could feel that person need something tiny from the Lord, but something else. Did. This person knew the word of God, but they needed something, and nothing was in me to give it. And after that happened, I said, Lord, I never want to be in a position where I have nothing. Offer someone again when they need something spiritually from you through me. I don't ever want to be empty like that again. Began to operate differently from that day forward. Not willing to compromise. If that person, if a person like that should ever pop up again, they need something real true from the Lord. Not going to be in that position again that I'm going to be able to give it. And God knows this, my prayer. I'm going to be armed so that if anybody need what that gentleman needed at that time, he will forgive it. I do not want to be empty ever again in my life for I have nothing to offer somebody else. Spirit, I'm telling you, money wouldn't have fixed Nothing would have fixed or helped this person out other than a fresh, a real, and authentic spiritual word. He already knew the scriptures, but who's going to put those scriptures in context? See, he needed something real. And nothing came. Nothing came. I'll never be in that position again. Because I prayed I would never be in that position again. And I hope that none of you are ever put me in a position. He is in emptiness beyond emptiness. Okay, I better let my voice rest up before, uh, let's see, before an hour hits. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Guys, God bless you guys. Well, like a Matt, we're going to talk about uh, Revelation. How about that? You're going to go into Revelation and start on a very controversial subject. You know, we're talking about list, list. Everybody has an idea or a theory or something like that concerning Revelation. Matt's okay. They have to speak their truth like God gave them. Like, what I'm concerned about Revelation as a whole is that people are ready for the spiritual manifestation of things of Revelation. There's, there's certain things that people in life see throughout their lives. And I tell you right now, there are things that apes have not dealt with. I'm not the only eyewitness or the event that gaze to your co-experiences. They do understand that humanity has to deal with something they did not count on. If that revelation is not some conventional thing, no, it's in there for a reason. And I pray that people are ready spiritually to face what the Lord would have them face. That what they think they might face. That what man thinks he could muster no but what the Lord has already set in motion. 
I desire that people be armed so they can stand no matter what the season is, no matter what the conditions are, and they can stand in the truth of Christ Jesus. That's your hope. That's my biggest hope because I know that people are going to be caught off guard and it's going to cost them your souls. If a person is caught off guard, their souls are in jeopardy. The penalties will come. And when the penalties come, I'm not. See, because there's a day coming when grace will be extinguished. The world's not going to have grace. You know how a person says, well, you know what? I'll try to get it right to learn. That person is going to be stuck. If they don't get it right, when grace is pulled, wherever they are, they're going to be stuck in that condition. That's who they're going to be without forgiveness. Let's go ahead and face it. We have taken God's grace for granted plenty of times. Every time we give ourselves ready to sin, we're taking His grace for granted, His mercy for granted. Not even considering that one day, one day, he's going to pull it from the face of the earth. And people are going to be stuck in their own condition. And that is not going to be a good day. It's going to be a terrible day. By the way, because tomorrow's promised to no person, and we know our moment is coming, do you not know? That means grace for us can be pulled at any topic. And whatever you've got undone could be your destruction. Whatever you left undone could be your destruction. And it can mean eternal separation from all that is God and love and hope and life. Lord have mercy. Here we are today saying, I'll get it right tomorrow. And God said, you may not have to yeah. make any promises to yeah. He didn't. He didn't promise any of us another day. She knew what that means. Should your time come, you're done. And if you've got something in your life you're not forgiven of that you didn't repent of, it will stand against you. There's no redemption. It's sin. That's the whole purpose of Christ. Whatever it is. This is something that cannot be forced. It's something a person must choose. Dentance is something a person must choose. It's not real. And it won't stand. He told me about that in the elder cup. Listen, I don't believe everything else is going to be running. Right, it's going to be running. But I'll be back at 10 p.m. Okay, everybody. God bless and keep all of y'all. See you guys at 7 p.m. Hopefully. My boys will be just a tad bit better. If not, well, they are going to have to go through with it anyway. Right? God bless you guys. I'll see you at 7 p.m. right here at COT. And I have to see this person button. See if the music works, at least. No one never hired me as DJ either. Okay. There we go. Do you guys hear? Our melody day, me, Pauls, and me. Okay, guys, I'll see you in a bit. God bless and keep it.